<laughs> hard to follow, and I'm hoping my presentation is not going to be super <coughs> boring uh, compared, compared to yours. Um, and I hope also it doesn't look too much like a sales pitch, uh, because uh, it's not, although it might look like it. Um, so I guess today is a really good opportunity um, for people like us who graduated a long time ago. And it's great to see some people that we actually finished 2003, exactly 10 years ago. Um, and three of us are in, in the same class. So uh, it's fantastic to catch up um, finally after so many years um, and to see what yeah, we're all doing kind of good well. Actually. Um, things have moved on at Robin Hood quite a bit since we graduated. Um, you know, the campus looks completely different, lots of new buildings. We're just reminiscing about Athlone and Cameron and Williamson Hall. They've all been knocked down and got nice new buildings. Instead, they did look horrible, to be fair. So, <laughs> they were like prison. So, um, so, you know, things are kind of moving in the right direction, it seems. Um, so, I just wanted to basically talk to you a bit about how I ended up doing what I'm doing, because it's quite difficult when you're at uni to, to decide where you want to end up, and often things kind of happen by chance. Uh, sometimes people are very organised, they plan ahead and three years ahead, five years ahead, they know where they want to be in, and they do it. But other people, like myself, kind of don't do that. So um, I remember sort of finishing my undergraduate degree and thinking, right, so what should I do next? And I was like, not sure, so why don't I do a master's? Um, and I ended up doing that. Now after the master's I was still kind of not quite sure what I wanted to do, so I thought, well maybe I should do a PhD and just carry on doing research. So I tried that for a bit, but I realised that it wasn't for me. And I think the realisation that I had was that I really like economics, I really like the tools that it gives you, the type, of, the way of thinking, the numeracy, but also the, the way in which you can apply this to real life situations and come up with some interesting answers. Um, and research does that, but the thing I didn't quite like was that it was slightly removed sometimes from the real world. Um, and it was that application to real life problems that, that drew me to something called economic consultancy. Which I'm still not, to this day not sure whether it should be economic or economics consultancy, but I'll just go with the uh, option without this. So, um, Essentially, the way I ended up at Frontier Economics was I just did a search online. I really didn't know what companies were out there at the time, and I just kind of started looking for it. I knew I wanted to do consultancy because it's kind of an advisory type thing where you apply your economics. But I didn't know what type of consultancy I wanted to do, and, and there were various types. You know, you can do strategy where you go and help businesses set their prices or think about how they can promote their goods to make more money. Um, well, there are other, you know, there are macroeconomic type of sources where you go and forecast foreign exchange or, you know, God knows what inflation rates, etc. Um, and I kind of knew that I didn't like macroeconomics, so that excluded these options. So I thought, okay, I need to kind of do a search word which is microeconomics and then maybe consultancy. And when I did that in Google, this company came up. Um, I had a look, it seemed okay. I applied for a job and Luckily, I got the job, and I've been there for the last five years. So, it kind of happened by chance. I didn't really have a master plan, it just, it just happened. So, that's how I ended up there. Uh, now, I'm going to tell you a bit about what I enjoy about being there, how I, what it is that, that I like about it. And I kind of already touched upon a lot of these things, so I might just rattle through the slides. So, the work that we do is, first thing to say is, it's, as a consultancy, it's 100% project-based. So the way it works is somebody comes to you and says, somebody will call a client, comes to you and says, I would like the, uh, to know the answer to this particular problem. The problem may be well-defined or not very well-defined, but usually you will have a question. You'll then go away, you'll think about the question, you'll use your analytical skills to set up an economic framework, you know, use your techniques, toolkit that you acquired at uni. Uh, you'll then try and manage things and, and, and arrive at, uh, you know, at some kind of answer in the end. And in doing that, in the end, hopefully you'll turn around to your client and explain in plain English what the answer is. 
So often the, the questions that we get asked are really technical and difficult, always economics related, um, and often clients, uh, maybe lawyers or uh, you know, people in government who are not necessarily economists or you know, regulators, etc. Um, so it's kind of essential that not only do you do the economics work properly and rigorously, but that you're able to explain in plain English what you're doing and how you've done it. And that's this bit here, the consultancy bit. And I kind of enjoy all of these things. Um, so, yeah. Um, in terms of the micro stuff, so essentially these are the, the bits uh, that, that we use, if you like. So the first thing you do is kind of, you go back to, I don't know, do you still use Sloman in Principles of Economics? First thing you do is when somebody asks you a question, you usually open slowly and you go, okay, kind of remember monopolistic competition, what's that? Oh yeah, that's the chart, that's what it means, da 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 da. You set up the framework, you try and, you know, work out what the answer should be in theory, then you get the data, you do some analysis, and you work out what the answer is in reality. And it's this kind of thing that is, is very stimulating and, and interesting. And it's always micro related, which I like. Because I don't like um, the other thing that's attractive is that, as I said earlier, it's project, the work is project-based and I like the fact that you're not always working for the same person and it's always a different question that you're, you're asked. So, some people specialise in very narrow sort of issues and they work always on the same stuff. I quite like working for a variety of different clients, they always have different questions, so you always learn something new. And I find that really attractive. As you can see, we've got a mixture of sort of clients that we work for. And this chart is supposed to show you that the work is for different clients, but they're also very different in nature. So you might have, you know, these various sectors that we operate in, and this is the type of work that you may be doing. And there may well be overlaps with what James is going to talk about later, between some of the stuff that we do and some of the stuff that perhaps James does. Uh, in particular, these are the sort of areas that, that we work at, uh, in. So, for example, in competition, uh, when you have <coughs> mergers or acquisitions that could lead to a lessening of, you know, um, uh, of, of competition in the market. Sometimes the regulatory authorities like the Competition Commission, etc., get involved with all the office of fair trading. They start saying, well, hang on a minute, you can't do this, you know, you're reducing competition in this market, prices are going to go up, uh, you know, we don't want this to happen. And often these things take, take years to work out, you know, is there actually going to be lessening of competition, etc., etc. So these are the type of issues that, uh, issues that, that we work on. And then we work on things like regulation. So for example, if you imagine a natural monopoly situation uh, where you know, if I'm left to my own devices, I can charge any price I want. Normally you get a regulator to step in and kind of put some kind of brakes on the, on the pricing and put some kind of standards that are required. Um, so we help regulators or regulated companies in these types of issues. And there's a whole bunch of other sort of sectors that, that we work in, uh, including it's quite a lot of work for government departments, which is interesting. So another thing that I really like about consultancy work is that you usually work in teams. And that's not always the case in, in research, which is, I found not so appealing. Um, and usually the teams are quite small. Um, and usually you always work with different people. So because the questions are always different, you'll have experts in various things sitting around. So if the question is about X, you'll go and work with that person. But if the question is about Y, you work with somebody else. Um, and it's that kind of variability I find quite, quite interesting. But I mean, the kind of common thing throughout is, is kind of application of microeconomics. So we also try and have fun and you know, mix things up with people, play football, things like that, which is quite enjoyable. Um, and we also kind of have a flat structure, so people sit in the same office and you can talk to anybody, so it's kind of quite nice. Um, and the last thing that I actually was one of the first things that appealed to me when I, when I was looking to apply was that the companies kind of got offices abroad as well, so <coughs> we have opportunities to kind of move around a bit. Um, okay, I don't want to go on for too long, so I think I'm going to stop there. And I'm very happy to take questions now, if there are any. I'll take questions later. Question. Um, could you give an example of a particular project that you did? What was the question and how you handled it? Right. 
Very good question. Let me think of a non-confidential one. Uh, so that, that's another thing to mention is that obviously a lot of the work we do is for you know, private clients and, and we can't share it with uh, the wider public. So for example, I, I think that's in the public domain, we worked um, quite a lot for um, a regulator which is now stopped. It doesn't exist anymore, or it was merged. So there was something called Postcom. Uh, they were the regulating body that was supposed to look after Royal Mail and the postal sector as a whole in the UK. Um, they were set up about 10 years ago by, by Blair and they were folded into Ofcom, which is kind of the <coughs> regulator that looks after communications broadly. So we did loads of different projects for them. Um, just trying to think. So, for example, pricing on things like pricing, you know, what sort of price increase you should be allowed. So, let's say the regulator wants to know. If the regulated company wants to increase prices by 5%, is that okay? And then generally, you know, just to come up with an answer which is yes or no, you have to do an enormous amount of work because you want to think about a lot of issues that uh, you know, underpin that decision. Um, other projects, I mean, I should really open the website. Have you got internet here? Uh, yeah. Okay, let me just have a look, sorry. <coughs> Oh yeah, sorry, I did one actually early on in the year, which is a good one, um, which is for the Migration Advisory Committee. So this is a body that was set up by, I think Gordon Brown, um, which was to advise government on immigration policy. Um, and they commissioned a piece of research that we did, uh, and that was kind of looking at how EU expansion, uh, so the new EU member states, uh, so Czech Republic, uh, you know, Slovakia, Slovenia, that joined in 2004 and the 2007 accession, so Bulgaria and Romania, what impact that's had <coughs> on the low skilled labour market in the UK. So that was a question. Within that, there were 10 other questions that you know, were very specific, and we kind of went and looked at data, did some analysis, and came up with a report. So that's another one. Yeah. There are loads. Any other questions? <coughs>